Have you ever felt yourself being continuously pulled back into a relationship with someone who, at this point, you don't even objectively like anymore? They're mean to you, they don't treat you well, you don't feel loved and respected, yet you still hold out hope that things can work out. Why is that? What's going on here? So I have a question from one of my Instagram followers that goes something like this. I broke up with my ex. I've told pretty much everyone how badly he treated me and I truly believe the things I said. I inherently don't like him and the way he is with me. Yet, when I talk to him, I find myself being soft even when he's rude. I keep trying to fix him, rescue him, tell him to go to therapy and tell him that if he's willing to work on himself, we can make this work. Why do I do that for someone who I inherently don't like? Why would I miss a man like this? I'm so glad this person asked this question because it's such a common experience to have in a bad relationship. We believe that if someone treats us badly, we should automatically want to leave them and that we should feel great once we leave them. And if we don't or we feel conflicted about it, then maybe there's something wrong with us, right? Have you felt like this too? Let me know in the comments. But this is not how it works. And whenever you hear yourself saying a should or thinking a should, that is your key to know that this is your conditioning. This is not actually the way it is, but this is the way society has taught you the way something should be. So what's going on for the person asking this question is that she is going through an inner conflict and she feels like she should just be able to leave this person. She should be able to just walk away knowing that he's hurt her and he doesn't treat her well. But it's not so simple as that. In reality, there's a lot going on emotionally. There's a lot going on in your nervous system when you're in a relationship like this where someone really isn't treating you well. Side note, you guys, I'm filming this in daylight. So if you see the, the light going in and out, it's like partly cloudy outside. So that's what you're seeing. The, the clouds are just going in and out. So I apologize for the, the lighting weirdness here. So back to what I was saying, there's a lot of complexity that's going on here in these relationships. It's not so black and white. It's not so simple as you're in a bad relationship, someone treats you badly and you leave and you're just fine and it's easy. Unfortunately, that is not the reality here. Anytime we're in a relationship with someone, we form an emotional connection. We can call that an emotional attachment, we can call it a bond, but we are becoming connected through emotions. This can be through feelings of love, through feelings of happiness. Sometimes it's also feelings of anxiety, maybe even a fear of losing this person. That's all the stuff that makes up that, that emotional bond, that glue that keeps you feeling connected to somebody. So this is all very normal and it, you feel good about it most of the time. A lot of the time you probably don't even notice it. You're just going about your life. But when you break up with someone or that person passes away, the emotions will come up. You will feel grief because that emotional connection is no longer there. So you'll feel sadness. Maybe you'll even feel some fear, some anxiety. And all of that is also normal. This is how relationships work. And, and when they end, that's why most people aren't able to just immediately get over somebody because there is all this emotional stuff to work through. Like if somebody passed away, we wouldn't just expect the person to feel fine right away, right? No, we would think, okay, this person has to grieve the loss of the relationship of this person. And it's no different than a breakup. Even if that breakup, even if that relationship was not good for you, even if it was a painful relationship, there's still the loss of that person that you have to grieve. So what else makes it hard to leave a relationship like this, a dynamic like this, where maybe you don't even like the person anymore, but you still feel compelled to make it work, is something that's called a trauma bond. I'll leave a link to a video where I'm talking all about trauma bonds at the end of this video, so you can go really deep into it. But I'll give you a brief over here of what I'm talking about. A trauma bond is when you're going through either you're in a painful relationship or you've left a painful relationship and that emotional attachment, that glue that's made up of every relationship also contains a lot of painful emotions. All of the things that were triggered in that relationship, like maybe shame, 
anxiety, fear, sadness, that's making that glue, that emotional glue, extra sticky. So breaking that emotional bond can be even harder sometimes than a healthy relationship because there's so many added emotional layers that you're trying to work through and heal from. Painful or toxic relationships are also often very addictive dynamics because somebody can be very warm one minute and very cold the next. And that attention and withdrawal is an addictive dynamic. Research has shown that. And so on top of all that, you have that addictive dynamic going on, which makes it even harder to move on from a relationship like that. And that is often why you keep getting pulled back in, even though you kind of don't really want to be there you feel compelled. So what's also going on here? What our attachment system is doing, what our nervous system is doing, is it's giving us the message that staying with this person is what will keep us safe. Now, are you objectively safe in these types of relationships? No, you're not. Often your life can be in danger. They can be very dangerous relationships. But for our nervous system, it will feel safe because it's familiar. We also believe that if we stay in this relationship, it will keep us away from the pain that we would inevitably have to go through if we let go of this person. And so it feels almost better, safer, to stay in this situation where yes, it's painful, but at least I'm still with somebody. At least I will avoid going through that painful process of letting them go. So really what our nervous system is doing is it's kind of like a survival strategy from back in the day where it literally was better, you were safer to be with a person like anybody, even if the relationship wasn't great, even if they weren't treating you well, than to risk being by yourself and maybe getting eaten by a saber-toothed tiger. Like we're talking way, way back here, but you're not in danger of that now. So just know that if you find yourself in a dynamic like this and you're wondering like, well, what's going on? Why do I keep wanting to go back to this person? Just know that you're responding normally to a challenging emotional and nervous system situation. There's not something wrong with you. Your nervous system is just doing what it thinks is best. It's trying to adapt to your situation to keep you safe. Know that you're not going to instantly stop having feelings for someone once you leave a bad relationship. It takes time and it takes healing. So what's the path here? What do you do if you're in this situation and you objectively know, I am not safe here, I am not loved here, this is not where I need to be, but you still feel compelled to be there. Your heart still wants to give it a try. What do you do? You leave and you follow your logical mind and you wait for your heart to catch up. Now, as I say this, I know with every bone in my body, how hard this can be. I am a person who has been following her heart for a really long time and who feels very, very driven by her emotions. And so this was so hard for me to do. It felt so hard to give up on what my heart wanted, what my emotional being wanted, which was to stay in these painful relationships. So hard. But what I eventually realized is that for some people, our nervous systems and our emotional beings, and we can even say our heart, our heart can be wired in a certain way based on how we grew up, the things that we experienced in our past and in our childhoods. And if we're wired in a certain way where bad relationships feel familiar, if we are just following our heart, our heart is going to continually lead us into situations where we are abused, we are taken advantage of. So just to clarify here, when I'm saying following your heart, really I'm meaning being led by your emotions because that's for a long time what I equated my heart with, going by what felt right for me. So again, this was my story. I did have a certain wiring that drew me to what was familiar from my past, which was unavailable people, people who didn't treat me well. And so when I was just purely following my heart, that's where it led me. So at a certain point, I realized I actually had to overrule my heart if like this might sound drastic, but like if I wanted to stay alive because I was getting myself into some some dangerous situations here. Really what I had to say to myself, I had to have like a conversation with my heart and say, heart, I know that you desperately want these bad relationships to work out, 
But based on the evidence that I see in front of me that I'm finally allowing myself to see very clearly, it's not working out. So I said to my heart, let's try something different. Even though I know you still don't want to, I know you still want to be here, let's try something different. And so that's what I did. And then I did something where I went even beyond the heart. I tuned into what I consider to be my true self. Some people call it like their inner wise self, their, their higher self, which how I conceive of it is something that even goes beyond the heart. It's deeper than that. We could call this your intuition. And what that part of you is, it's you without all of your wounds and without all of your conditioning. It's like who you are coming out of the womb. That's who you are, like your, your pure self. And when you tune into that part of you, it's not gonna feel like you're being pulled in a strong way towards something. It's actually a very still small voice and it kind of just whispers and it says very quietly, like there's something better for you out there. There's more for you out there. Again, it's not demanding. It's not saying you should leave this relationship. It's saying there's more, there's more. And so that's what I had to eventually follow and kind of overrule my heart, that emotional part of me, and go with that wise message from myself. So that, that part of myself and my logical part of myself is what I followed to lead me to now being in a healthy relationship. And I let my heart catch up. It didn't happen immediately. It did take some time and some healing, but now I'm truly happy and I was able to open my heart to this person that I'm with now. I had to stop following my emotions. And so that is what I recommend that you do as well if you're in this type of situation. I know that every part of your being, it feels like it's so compelling, it's gonna wanna pull you back in, but at a certain point you gotta say, nope, nope, I'm reading the writing on the wall here. Logically I see that every time I go back here, this person continues to not treat me well. I have to follow the evidence here. This is not going to change. So if you want to learn more about what a trauma bond is, that thing that makes it so hard to leave these dynamics, check out this video here.